Hey guys, what's going on? Tool Cruise here, checking in in Lake Orion, Michigan. And today I'm gonna be riding my new gravel bike on some of the local trails here. And in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the differences between using a road bike versus using a gravel bike, which one is better in different situations. So I'm gonna be talking about that during today's ride as we explore some places that are more favorable for the gravel bike. So let's go ahead and get started with today's ride. We're starting here over in downtown Lake Orion and they have a beautiful trail network over here in Oakland County, Michigan and a lot of different trail connectors. Some of them are paved, some of them are gravel and we're going to be starting on this one which is the Paint Creek Trail which goes to my original hometown of Rochester, Michigan. They also have this cool little repair stand here and luckily I don't need any repairs right now so we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're about to start on the Paint Creek Trail, which is a railed trail. It's an old railway line converted to a multi-use path. Great for cycling, great for running, great for walking your dogs, and just all around a great system that I really enjoy. So you can see right now we're starting and it's paved. So in my area, this may like change depending on where you live and what systems you have around you, but in my area, we have a lot of gravel paths, a lot of dirt paths, and we're starting to get a few more paved paths like this one. And uh, it's so exciting being back here. Uh, just in case there's anyone new to the channel, my name's Cruz. I've been living in Japan and Vietnam for the last eight years. Over there, I mainly only ride road bikes. They don't have any like great systems for mountain biking or for gravel or anything like that and they have a lot of good like smooth road pavement rides so i've been really enjoying the road bike there but here thank you they got crosswalks that people actually like stop for which is great they never stop for the crosswalks over in vietnam but anyway i'm really excited to be back here in my hometown in michigan um, this is only like my first time or second time riding here in the summer in like the last 10 years. So it's pretty crazy. And I've forgotten a lot of things like just what it's like to ride here and to be able to ride like where a gravel bike or a cyclocross bike even would be like the better option. So that's why I thought I'd talk about this topic in this video, just comparing the road bikes versus the gravel bikes. So now this trail is starting to convert to this kind of like light gravel. It's very smooth. There's no rough anything. It's just really hard dirt and a little bit of sand. And some of it is like canopy covered like this. So I really, really like this trail network that we have here. And we actually have multiple trail networks like this. Some that connect certain cities and go other ways. So some are like this and it's great on nice days like this, but it kind of sucks when it's like wet you don't want to ride on this when it's wet it just gets your bike dirty and it can damage the trail a little bit as well but anyway let's get back into the topic and let's start talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages of each bike so since we're starting on this path and i'm on the gravel bike i'll start talking about the advantages of the gravel bike and that is you can ride road you can ride gravel you can ride light mountain bike trails I just tested this bike for the first time on some light cross country trails and it performs really great. Like you're not going to be able to go over some of the rough stuff because you don't have suspension, but you can still ride through it pretty smooth for the most part. And just having that versatility, like you can just change to any tire. You can go thinner with road. You can go wider if you want to, if you know you're going to be riding some rough roads. Michigan is a Northern climate. So our roads are horrible. We have potholes everywhere. So I've actually really enjoyed riding this bike not only on the dirt roads but on the main roads as well because the potholes are just that bad and the main disadvantages with the gravel bike is unless you go for like a high-end race one it's generally going to be a little bit heavier than your standard road bike so performance wise you're going to suffer a little bit but i think for most people that's not going to be a big issue and if you're doing a lot of climbing that weight also might be a factor but I mean, you can always get a nice higher end gravel bike and then the weight differences can be pretty minimal, I think, compared to the road bike. So going on to the road bike, 
Um, I've been really enjoying my carbon aero road bike for the last year. I've been training pretty hard with it, targeting my like hill climbs that I want to do in Vietnam. They've got some amazing like paved roads, smooth paved roads, some great hills, and it's really enjoyable to be able to ride the road bike at high speed. So let's go into the advantages of road bikes. Road bikes are going to generally be lighter, faster, um, some more aerodynamic, but I guess there's aero gravel bikes now too. And I think those are the like main advantages over that. So I think for most cyclists, unless you're like a competitive cyclist and you want to do something on the road, like you have certain challenges, like you want to upgrade to a certain category, you want to win certain events. Uh, for me, honestly, I don't think there's really much value in getting just a road bike when you could get a gravel bike and just be slightly heavier for the same price and you have the option to go both on gravel and on pavement. But I mean, it depends on your area. So if I were still living in Japan or uh, when I go back to Vietnam, I still got my road bike there. And that's because it's the terrain and the environment that decides it for me. I don't have any like gravel trails like this or any mountain bike trails anywhere that I could even ride wider tires really if I wanted to, other than the pavement, which is pretty smooth for the most part. But if I was living in a place like this that just had a bunch of dirt roads, like hands down, I'd pick the gravel bike over the road bike any day unless I was racing at a like pretty decent category, like maybe Cat 3 or higher even. Um, it's kind of funny. Back in the day when I was racing pretty competitively about 10 years ago, I was pretty broke. Like I was a college student. I didn't have much money to buy nice bikes. And sometimes I was on a good team that would sponsor me a bike, but not all the time, especially not multiple bikes. Like I might just get the road bike and that's it. And at one point I was really competitive with cyclocross and I couldn't afford to, to get both the cyclocross bike and the road bike. So I ended up just getting like a really nice cyclocross bike. It was a Trek Cronus, I believe. And I used that for cyclocross season and I used it for road season. And I had some pretty good results on that bike. And I was racing some pretty high level races on that. I got second place in the Midwest Collegiate Championships in the Division One Conference. And that's with like varsity teams. So second place in a road race with a cyclocross bike. But again, if you're in a certain environment where you have a lot of like hill climbing, like serious mountains, like every gram that you can drop on your bike is really important. So if you want to focus more on having more of a hill climbing style bike, then road bike is probably the way to go for you. And even some of the more modern road bikes are like having more clearance. The line is starting to get a little bit blurry between both types of bikes. Like endurance road bikes are having more clearance options now. Even racers are starting to increase their, their tire width. Uh, back when I was like racing seriously, most people were racing like 23s. And on the track, some people were racing like 21s. And now like it's pretty standard to either be on a 25 or 28. And a lot of road bikes even have clearance up to like 30 or even 32, which is like an old cyclocross race kind of bike. The current gravel bike that I'm riding now has a 40 tires and I think it has clearance up to 42. And some of the more hardcore gravel bikes, which blur the line more towards like a, a rigid mountain bike, go even wider than that. So it's hard to compare them both directly because they're both kind of on a spectrum. like they can blend into each other a little bit at times. But for me, if there's even any kind of like trace of dirt roads or like mountain bike trails in my area, I'd almost hands down always go for the gravel bike. Even if I were racing, I'd probably just go for a high end like cyclocross bike. That way I can use it between both disciplines. Um, unless I was trying to go like cat one domestic elite pro or even higher, like I don't think it makes much of a difference. You can win Cat 3 and even get to Cat 2 on a cyclocross bike. I was racing Cat 1 races on a cyclocross bike, so it's totally doable if you get a high-end spec enough one. And why wouldn't you? Because it gives you the versatility to ride wherever you want, especially if you get two wheel sets. It was actually pretty shocking for me when I came back here and I started riding on some of the main roads. I was kind of scared and like, I cycle in Vietnam like every day when I'm there and they have some of the craziest traffic you can 
like you'd ever see. I'll try and add some video here so you can see, but it's just constant chaos, people breaking rules. Uh, the other downside about this trail is you do have some road crossings every once in a while. So you gotta stop for these. This guy's stopping. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think they're technically supposed to stop there, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, going back to the roads in Vietnam, like you'd think it'd be, I'd feel much more dangerous riding in that kind of environment where people are riding the opposite way. They're just pulling into the road randomly, but I actually feel a lot safer there. And the reason for that is because most people there, A, their vehicles are much smaller. Most people are riding like motorbikes, mopeds, and B, they're riding at much slower speeds. And C, the roads are a lot wider. The roads have multiple lanes and usually the furthest right lane, it, there's a lot of like people like sort of parks there. So most traffic doesn't use half of that right lane. So you have a safe space for yourself. And then D, like the, probably the biggest part is just nobody has any hatred or animosity towards cyclists. And I mean, that's more of a cultural thing. I think for some reason, a lot of Americans are like trained to, to hate cyclists and they view like people who ride bikes as like childish. Whereas in other countries, like in European countries and Asian countries, they don't have that same kind of mindset. So for me in the USA, like unless I was living in like a mountain town with like decent roads and like decent mountains to ride, I don't want to ride a road bike on the main roads unless it's kind of like a closed course and there's a good community or if I was really involved in the racing scene. But like hands down, I'd rather go on a hard gravel mountain bike ride any day of the week unless it's raining. <laughs> That's the other downside about riding gravel and mountain bike is uh, generally I wouldn't want to ride outside in the rain because the bikes get a lot dirtier and you also damage the trails. Whereas you can get away with like the road rides in the rain, as long as you're in like a safe area with less cars. I'm also really excited to show this video with my wife. My wife is actually still back in Vietnam waiting for me to get back. And like, she's never really experienced like these kinds of trails before. And this is kind of like a bike highway. We had similar kind of paths in Japan along the river uh, because they don't close down most of the old rail lines there but they usually have like emergency access roads along the rivers and they turn those into like walking, cycling paths. And those ones are really nice because they have underpasses with the cars on the bridges above. So you don't have to stop at any of the, like the crossing areas, you can just go under the bridge. Whereas these ones, you, you do have to stop at those roads, but there's usually not too many. And in some of them, the further you get out from like the main city area, the less there are and the less cars there are. But yeah, it's really cool and all, but <laughs> there's good and bad with it too, because it is an old rail line, so it's a lot flatter. You're not gonna get much hills on this path, but you can turn off this path and get onto some other like nearby dirt roads and go on some hills there if you want. So speaking of turning off the trail, I'm actually gonna do that now. I'm gonna take a different route to get to Rochester and that's going to be by going up one of the steeper hills in this area. So this is a, a cider mill right here, actually, which is something that I really miss from back home. They sell like apple cider and fresh donuts, an awesome place to go in the fall. That's the other great thing about the gravel bike is I can ride the best gravel roads and the best paved roads. I can just pick and choose and have a lot more route options. So I believe this used to be like the steepest climb in the area, but it's not that long. It's only like a minute all out sprint. This is Snell Road. And I mean, this used to feel really steep for me, but now that I've been cycling in Vietnam for over a year, like this is nothing. It gets steeper than this, like at the top of like a five kilometer climb. So yeah, this one's saying, 14% right now, which I mean, yeah, it's pretty steep, but it's only a short climb. So it's kind of funny how 
like your perspective on things change after you, you get more experiences. Yeah, that really wasn't that bad. I'm just breathing hard because I haven't done much riding the last week and this bike is quite a bit heavier than my carbon road bike. And the other cool thing with this climb is once it finishes, it just converts to this dirt road and we've got a bunch of dirt roads over here. You gotta dodge some of these big potholes though. It's kind of funny because growing up here, like I always trained on my mountain bike. I did my endurance training on my mountain bike and I did my speed training on the velodrome and I only ever touched my road bike when I was racing. <laughs> like I, I never trained on it unless there was like a, a training race or something. But I'd much rather train on these rolling dirt roads with very little traffic. It's just a lot safer. You don't have to deal with cars, exhaust, like dangerous drivers. And it's just a lot more scenic out here. Especially here, like this is a just really beautiful area. A lot of beautiful houses and yeah, just nice rollers. So good training too. The unfortunate thing though is they're starting to pave more and more of these gravel roads back here just because they're building more and more nicer subdivisions so it's kind of unfortunate to see them slowly fading away but we still got a bunch so no worries there. I will say that there is one disadvantage of the dirt roads that I forgot about and that is they can be really dusty sometimes like my bikes have been getting pretty dusty since I've been training on them. And also I can feel it in my mouth. Like if I'm like riding with my mouth open, I just feel like I just got a bunch of dust and like sand or whatever in my mouth and it's gross. So I imagine that's probably not too great for your lungs either, even though you're getting away from the exhaust. But yeah, we got so many like good dirt roads back here that I actually didn't ride those rail to trails very often because those rail to trails usually have a lot of like families out there and there's technically like speed limits for safety. So if you want to actually train <laughs> and like train at the speed that you need to train at, it's usually better to just train on these dirt roads. We're crossing one of the big main roads here. This is Rochester Road and it just goes north and south. That way we'll take you all the way to downtown Rochester, but we're going to continue taking some back roads there. Just a lot more enjoyable and I don't want to be on this road with all these big cars. And here we are back on the dirt. And we're going to turn right here on Sheldon Road. And there's a huge metro park over here. Pretty soon on the left, just massive center. They got a whole like road loop, protected road loop around the entire lake, a bunch of mountain bike trails. So that's where I'm heading right now. I'm going to continue testing the gravel bike to see how it performs on the mountain bike trails. Probably not going to go on anything rough because I got a pinch flat on yesterday's ride so I'm not going to push it too hard but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you had to choose one bike, the road bike or gravel bike or cyclocross bike, which one would you pick and why? Since I did mention cyclocross bikes a few times in this video, I, I think like the main difference now is just gravel bikes generally have more clearance and are less race oriented and but and cyclocross bikes are going to be able to turn better be a little bit more lightweight and more agile for accelerations but they don't have as much clearance so if you want to ride rougher stuff uh, you won't be able to do that on like certain cyclocross bikes but this kind of stuff would probably be okay on a cyclocross bike but yeah let me know what you think which bike would you choose and why here we are. Very cool little entrance and check it out. Now we're on this awesome trail network back here. They've got so much double track. They got multiple double track loops around the whole place. There's a bunch of single track loops and there was a bunch here back when I used to train here and I've heard they've increased it even more since then. So I'm going to enjoy myself back here for a little bit and so before we finish the video, this is one place I wanted to show you guys. This place is really special and dear to my heart. This is the International Velodrome at Bloomer Park, IVBP. And I grew up here, like this is where 
I did a lot of my training. This is what helped push me to get to the next level. And unfortunately, this place is kind of look like it's running down right now. They're not using it as much. It used to be like busy every day. People were here. We had dedicated training sessions, but now they have the new indoor velodrome in Detroit. And so most of the track community is just focused there because it's a lot more consistent. It's a lot closer to most of the people who live closer to the city and they don't have to deal with like rain and weather. They can train in the winter. So really sad to see this place kind of run down like this, but the boards are still up. So I wonder if people still do train on here sometimes. This is a 200 meter track and I believe it was 45 degree banking. So yeah, this is where I grew up and we've got some amazing mountain bike trails back here as well. And over here is where the spectators used to sit. So you just bring a tarp and just sit out here, enjoy some track racing. They even put some lights out. So we used to have like Friday night races under the lights. It was a really cool vibe. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time.